And as Israel orders an unprecedented evacuation of northern Gaza ahead of its ground offensive, concerns mount over the risk of a regional spillover from the war between Israel and Hamas. The U.S. forces, too, are facing increased threats, raising concerns that the Israel-Hamas war may spiral across West Asia, involving countries like Lebanon, Syria and Yemen. Well, the signs of escalation in West Asia might already be visible. Let's first show you the battlefronts that are already active. Here is Israel on the map, and this is where Gaza, West Bank, Lebanon, Syria and Yemen are. First, let's start off with Gaza and West Bank. The Israeli forces are fighting with Hamas in the Gaza Strip. In the latest, Israel bombed Gaza with multiple airstrikes. Health authorities in Gaza said that at least 4,600 people were killed in Israel's two-week bombing that began after Hamas's October 7th rampage on southern Israel. While the communities, meanwhile, this is also where Hamas militants are keeping the hostages. Then there is West Bank, where just a day ago, Israeli aircraft struck a compound beneath the Al-Ansar Mosque in the Janine refugee camp. This is the second Israeli airstrike in recent days to hit the West Bank. Let's head over to Lebanon now, starting with Hezbollah, the Iran-backed militia in Lebanon. Its fighters are attacking Israel from the north ever since the Israel-Hamas war broke out earlier this month. Israel has already enhanced its evacuation efforts along the northern borders with Lebanon. In the latest, Israeli aircraft claim to have struck two Hezbollah cells in Lebanon. Israel says that they were planning to launch anti-tank missiles and rockets towards Israel. Hezbollah has vast stocks of long-range missiles which could strike almost anywhere in Israel. Well, Hezbollah's entry into the war, however, could unleash direct Israeli strikes, not just against Lebanon, but also against Iran. Israel has issued a warning to the Iran-backed group. Well, an IDF spokesperson said that Hezbollah is, pla is playing a very dangerous game. He added that Hezbollah's actions could drag Lebanon into a war with no gains. Heading over to Syria now, where Hamas's main regional backer, Iran, has a military occupancy. The Israeli missiles hit Damascus and Aleppo International Airports, putting both out of service and also killing two workers there. Well, Iran has long supported these groups in Syria, where Israel and the U.S. are also engaged in the long civil war there. And talking about U.S. and Syria, let's now head over to Yemen. In the south, another Iran-backed group in Yemen, it has been troubling Israel. A U.S. Navy a warship traveling near Yemen intercepted three missiles above the northern Red Sea and several drones that were launched by what U.S. said was the Iran-aligned Houthi movement. The missiles were heading north and the U.S. says that they may have been aimed at Israel. Well, Houthis have, as of now, expressed support for the Palestinians and threatened Israel that they claim to possess a liquid propellant missile known as Tufan, which reportedly has the capability to strike anywhere within Israel. Now, in the very latest, the Israeli military said that one of its tanks had accidentally fired and hit an Egyptian post near the border with Gaza. The Egyptian military said that the blast had caused minor injuries but did not give details. The Egyptian army said that Israel had immediately expressed its regret over the unintentional incident and also a probe is currently underway. Most importantly, this is also where the humanitarian aid is coming in from. And for more on this, we were earlier joined by Edward P. Joseph from Washington, D.C. Uh, Joseph is a political expert and a senior fellow at the Johns Hopkins University School of Advanced International Studies. Listen to what he had to say on this story. The Israelis seem to be fairly confident about their ability to sustain the operations that they need to. In terms of the actual fronts, uh, the most likely uh, activity, of course, would be in Gaza. And we should remember here, put everything in perspective for your viewers, that 
Uh, this war began two weeks ago when Hamas launched it. It's very important to keep that in mind. This is a war Israel did not want. It suffered, a, as your report accurately mentioned, a mass terror attack on October 7th, just two weeks ago. And already people are have forgotten about those graphic, gruesome details about, for example, intentional killing of, of babies, of infants, the slaughter of some uh, uh, 250 young people at a concert. That's what propelled this. That's this is a mass terror attack that uh, for Israel, the the uh, compared to its population, those civilian casualties are staggering. Some 1,400 Israelis were killed. So that's the context here uh, uh, for this. This is a war that Hamas launched, and that's the focus going in Gaza, going after Hamas, not intentionally going after. Uh, Palestinian civilians, although they are caught in the middle of this and, of course, suffer from the blockade on Gaza. Absolutely true. Now, when we come to potential uh, expansion, the first place we look is um, not Syria and, of course, not Yemen, but we look first towards uh, Lebanon and Hezbollah, which, as your report also accurately mentioned, is under uh, total Iranian uh, uh, support and, if not, uh, direct operational control. Now, for Hezbollah, it's not so simple. Uh, it's not just a simple matter of Hezbollah saying, oh, well, we'll take advantage of this opportunity while Israel is uh, deploying troops uh, uh, and uh, potentially on the ground in Gaza. Well, uh, for Hezbollah, there are risks there. Hezbollah has its hands full within Lebanon itself. The, uh, Lebanon is in a severe state of division, and uh, Hezbollah is locked into uh, tension and conflict with uh, its counterparts within Lebanon itself. So it is not risk-free for Lebanon to simply mount an operation against uh, Israel, and there may be dis disputes and differences between Iran and Hezbollah about uh, whether or not it wants to engage with um, uh, Israel. But at this point, again, Israel seems to be confident about its handle, ability to, to handle uh, those two fronts.